Hi, and welcome back to another episode of the History of Fan Anime. I'm your host, William Chow, and today's episode, I'm going to get into more of uh, my trip to China and basically things that I've, I've noticed and that I saw in China when I went over to meet my wife. Okay, uh, so I had such great response from you guys, that's great. I, uh, I wanted to make a, you know, a different episode about, uh, you know, anime flyers and that kind of stuff, but I'll be able to do that as, as my next one. But this one, we'll do more of my trip, but for that, I wanted to remind you people to basically go down below, click like, click subscribe, and of course now you gotta hit notify because uh, you know you, YouTube has uh, you know changed algorithms and that's the only way you sort of know when I make new videos. Okay, so please click that little bell if you can. And as well, I've also made a new index which allows uh, you to look at all the various different episodes I, uh, I've made because again YouTube doesn't uh, you know uh, recommend any of my videos uh, that, that for, uh, to you. So uh, that's another thing that you've gotta do to check out the content. Okay, so. Without further delay, let's begin. Okay, so I'm going to continue on. Uh, it's uh, February 22nd, 2005. It's a Tuesday. Uh, so um, today, uh, after just uh, sort of relaxing all day, uh, decided uh, for dinner, we're going to go to a Korean barbecue place. Now this place is kind of neat because all the uh, hostesses and the waitresses uh, that are um, uh, in this uh, Korean restaurant are wearing these uh, sort of I don't know, sort of like uh, these uh, Korean uh, maid sort of uniforms, okay? Uh, they're all sort of green um, uh, maid uniforms. Okay, so I noticed that uh, one of the things that they do at this particular place is they, uh, you know, they, they they constantly come over to, uh, you know, change the grill once every, like, say, 10 or 15 minutes. They swap out, uh, you know, the, 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 the grill and the, the, they give you a new one. And uh, you know all the stuff that you were sort of kind of cooking on the old one, they they transfer over to another to another plate. Um, they also have um, there's these covers that uh, when you um, basically put your coat onto the the onto your seat, they have this cover which covers the the coat uh, while it's on the seat. So basically, you know, it's supposed to protect. Uh, your clothes uh, against the the sprays of any oils or that kind of stuff uh, while you're eating at the table. So that that was kind of kind of neat. And um, so we and yeah, I've also you know noticed that they're you know doing various different cleaning and that kind of stuff. Uh, and whatnot. Uh, there's this one the, the time uh, near the end of when we were staying. Um, the two of the waitresses were basically you know, mopping the floor, and they're using sort of a you know, a curling method, basically, where they line up the two mops together and they basically push back and forth, uh, you know, cleaning the di different areas. Okay, so the next day is uh, Wednesday, February 23rd, and this is the day um, uh, I was able to go down to the ANA office uh, because of now apparently this is the day that my luggage actually arrives um, from, basically, San Francisco uh, through Narita. It actually now arrives at the ANA office, so now I was able to go. Uh, down to their uh, office to actually go get to go get it. Now the funny part is is that when we get down to the office, right? Uh, you know, there's this uh, you know sort of you know secretary information desk or whatever at the front. The attendant um, had no idea where the office was, so it's kind of like, you know, the office is in your building. You're the person that's sitting at you know the bellhop or the you know just the, the 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 person at the bottom of the building, you know. You're supposed to know who all the people or who all the offices are in your you know in your building. Yet you don't know where the build you know you don't know where this office is, right? So literally, we had to basically make a cell phone call um, to the phone number that was on the on the contact sheet, and then sort of like uh, so. Then yeah, basically an A and A um, person had to come down to the uh, reception desk and basically get us to go up there. So it's kind of like. Wow, they pay a guy to do that, to, to basically just sit there and do nothing, and know nothing. So I was like, wow, okay, well, whatever. Anyway, so we go up to the office, and uh, yeah, there you know, there was uh, the bag and everything. And, uh, you know, it, it was still all locked and everything else like that. So basically, uh, you know, security and that kind of stuff and, and whatnot, and customs, didn't even bother checking it. So, I mean, quite simply, I could have had anything in that bag, and I could have actually, you know, it, it went through the customs check and that kind of stuff because it didn't, you know, obviously it wasn't a carry-on by me. It was actually brought in, you know, by, um, you know, basically airport st stuff and went through the security and all that kind of stuff. And so that was kind of, you know, that was kind of an underhanded way to do things. So that, you know, I, you know, I, I could have had weird stuff in there, but uh, anyway, 
that's a sort of interesting sort of loophole there anyway <laughs> so um today is supposed to be a special day um we basically went over and had uh, a, a dinner at um at amy's mom's place and um today's a special day uh you know i guess it's kind of like your you know chinese new year or whatever but it's it's common to walk a hundred steps to you know for good luck today so one of the things that we did is so uh, you know I, I, wa I walked back uh to the uh, you know to her place um you know during this sort of uh thing um now one of the things that a lot of people did at this time was they lit off a lot of uh, fireworks and that kind of stuff and again it's um you know, like, uh, you know, let's say Halloween or something like that, uh, everyone's, you know, lighting off fireworks and that kind of stuff, and they're doing it everywhere, and, um, and it was pretty accessible. I mean, sometimes, you know, for us, we have to get the you know, licenses and that kind of stuff, and we have to register online and all this stuff for that. Um, but there, you know, you don't need to do nothing like that. Uh, the fireworks are fairly inexpensive. I mean, you can get, like, um, you know, for one yuan, okay, so that's like 33 cents or something, you get a single bang firecracker, right? To like, you know, a couple tens of yuan for like handheld Roman candles, um, to a few hundred yuan for like, you know, multi-stage rockets. And again, it's, you know, six to one to the, for the dollar, right? So you can get some, you know, you know, this, this is a pyromaniac's dream here, right? So here I am just, you know, walking home, uh, you know, back to any place here. And uh, we had, uh, I, I saw one guy, uh, he's lighting off a single, um, you know, just just single, single uh, fire back, uh, 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 firecracker chains, right? Um, those are the ones that, you know, you basically, you know, they're, they're just basically single fire um, firecrackers, right? But they're, but they're all sort of, um, you know, one few sort of links a whole long chain of them, right? So this guy had a, probably... A whole linking chain probably you know three feet four feet maybe five feet long a one continuous chain of fireworks and he just lit it off on the sidewalk and it's just and unfortunately it blocked the entire sidewalk so no one could walk uh, along this section of sidewalk until the, the fireworks finished, right? So it's just basically, well, it's just, just popping away on the sidewalk. And of course, you know, it's, you know, he just, I guess he just lit it here. Not, I'm sure it's, you know, um, not even close to where he lives, but, <laughs> but yeah, so basically that was, you know, the first in the camera light show. Lasted at least about, you know, two or three minutes uh, having to stand there and wait for the, all the stuff to go off before we can actually continue to pass. Okay. Um, so, you know, continue walking our, our, our steps right here. And then, um, we noticed that uh, we're walking in front of this uh, hotel, and there's uh, you know, these the, the three ushers or the or, or the or the people at the hotel, they're just sort of standing around waiting for people to you know park cars and valet or whatever, and I guess one guy was so bored, um, he had a, a small chain of uh, of firecrackers, and he was lighting them off uh, by basically what he was doing he's you know, there, there's these, uh, you know, sort of, uh, you know, I guess, light poles, you know, like uh, for, for, for city lights. Um, uh, well, you know, what's common thing that, that, that they do is sometimes they hang them from the pole and then light them, light them, uh, you know, from there, and then they, they basically explode and crack on the pole. So I noticed that one of the ushers, you know, while on the job, is lighting off firecrackers, <laughs> um, you know, doing that. Okay, so. Uh, continue walking along and uh, you know just so just observing all these different people you know laying off uh, fireworks and us and so I noticed another one where I was walking down the street um, there's uh, there's someone who basically had like a I guess a, like a little van right like like you know, not not exactly a Volkswagen van but you know that kind of idea and um, he's basically drove into this parking lot of this apartment complex okay and there's you know the it's a pretty much an empty parking lot, right? And uh, all basically, he drove it into the parking lot. He basically set up a whole bunch of rockets uh, in the parking lot, and he's just launching them up, okay? And and uh, you know, he just just fired a bunch of them going in, you know. Uh, a lot of them were the ones that, they, that they you basically you hear the f you hear the pop and they fire into the air. You don't see the trail um, as as they go up, but then all of a sudden they explode, right? Um, uh, and they and they blow up, you know, 
15, 20, you know, stories up in the air or whatever, and uh, then they explode, which is really good because I just realized that, okay, this guy's firing them off in the parking lot of this apartment complex, right? I'm looking up at, uh, you know, looking up at the at the apartment complex, and I'm realizing, you know, up there at about the 14th, 15th, you know, 16th floor or whatever, there's open windows up there. So I mean, you know, just not to think of it. It's like, you know, okay, not that little, you know, it, well, you know, it happened or anything, but you know, you can imagine that this, you know, this rocket you know, has no controlled flight, so it could easily r r r rocket up there hit one of those windows or whatever and bounce inside the apartment complex and you know explode inside some guy's apartment right but again i'm sure that this guy you know man you know doesn't belong to this guy's apartment anyway so anyway so not that that one nobody cares right anyway so uh you know continue along um continue walking down along and then i saw down some alley uh, some guy um, must have uh, had an accident of some sort because all of a sudden there's a, a small fire somewhere down the middle of the uh, uh, down in the middle of the alley. So I don't know, maybe he was set things off and he lit the, some garbage on fire or something. Uh, maybe some you know Roman candle kind of stuff or whatever. So uh, you know, just, you know, just don't do anything. Just keep walking away. Yeah, all right. Just you know, <laughs> move along, move along. Yeah, don't see nothing. Don't say nothing. Right. Um, Another really common and more, probably one very dangerous uh, firework is what they refer to as the handheld Roman candle. Okay, and basically this is you know a long sort of rod. Um, it usually can be handheld because usually it's on a stick or something, right? And it contains about like ten Roman candle balls which shoot out out, out of the top of the uh, of of the the tube, right? And um, you know, and they give a glow as they travel through the air, right? So um, here I am walking down the, the road to see another guy. This uh, idiot is uh, basically inside his house, um, uh, basically um, shooting out these Roman candles from his uh, out, uh, you know, from his house, you know, across the sidewalk and, and on on to, onto the street. And I guess he's sort of trying to, you know, you know, I guess he's sort of aiming at passing cars or cyclists or whatever. Or, um, you know, and of course, maybe pedestrians and that kind of stuff. Um, uh, you know, that were walking on the sidewalk. So basically, again, we had to wait until he was out of ammo before we could like run past him, right? Um, it's just one of those you know, annoying, you know, annoying things because obviously he's like, you know, you're setting off fireworks. You know, you should probably get out of, you know, out of the house and set off the fireworks outside rather than you know set off the fireworks inside your house. But you know. Anyway, there was like I said, there was literally everyone was you know firing these things off. There's so much to see, and um, you know I can I, I I even I could find myself going psycho over this stuff because the price is so cheap and that stuff. Anyway, um, the air was very very thick. It had the really you know thick burning smell of you know, smoke or you know that 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 uh, you know fire, but pyrotechnic smell, um, and uh, it you know and. I, Heck, uh, even as late as like 1 a.m. in the morning, people were still launching, you know, fireworks and that kind of stuff off, which is probably not that different from, you know, Halloween that we have here. Okay, so the next day, uh, I went to what they call the uh, the, the uh, King's Summer Palace. So in Xinjiang, the um, the emperor has his basically summer residence. You know, you know, shall we say the summer cottage, if you will. Um, it's located in the city, and we basically went there to basically visit and see. You know, nice kind of place. That they still needed upgrading and that kind of stuff, but you know, here it's a nice place to be. And then in the evening, we went to a place called Bailing Park, which is supposed to have a, like a nice lighted pathway. But unfortunately, the lights weren't working. So who in hell wants to go to the park? Um, you know, when there's no lights working because it'd be all dark, right? So as you can see, there's lots of people that kind of sort of came, but they you know couldn't do anything because obviously. Uh, the lights in the park weren't weren't, weren't, weren't turned on, so uh, so couldn't do anything that evening anyway. Okay, so today um, we go over to this uh, sort of multi-level mall. Okay, and uh, the unique thing about this particular mall is, I guess, it has all the regular you know clothing stores and food stores and that stuff at the bottom, but at the very very top level of this mall, 
is uh, sort of their kids' amusement area. Okay, so you know a lot of these, um, you know, in this top part of the area has you know uh, stuff for the younger kids, like uh, you know, um, you know, laser tag and things like that. Um, you know, like you know, a lot of these uh, sort of carnival-like games, that kind of stuff, uh, was also available for them. Um, <clears throat> there are things like, uh, uh, you know. A Things that, that they can play, uh, things like, like like the dart throws and archery, and there's a you know, the little pellet guns where you try to hit little targets, and they have um, computer terminals with like uh, kid software and that kind of stuff uh, uh, loaded up. They have uh, petting rooms and that kind of stuff with like birds and dogs and uh, little things like that. There's craft areas, so you know, it's basically a place that you know you, you bring you know bring your kids and uh, and do that. But, okay. But the thing that really interested me is the fact that it actually has an arcade in this way. So this is the first arcade I've ever come across. And inside this arcade, you know, it's got some slightly outdated games. Like it's, um, in this case, I remember seeing uh, Time Crisis 3, has uh, an LA Guns, a uh, Virtual Cop, uh, Point Blank. Um, there's a you know whole pile of these, uh, you know, Street Fighter and a King Fighter, a King of Fighters and Sangle Fighter type kind of games. Um, there's some a lot of driving games like a Sega GT and that kind of stuff, um, but the other thing that really interested me are these rhythm games. Uh, mostly like a lot of these DJ and button pressing type games. They did have a Drum Mania game, like an original um, Drum Mania 2, I do believe game uh, uh, that was, but it was turned off at the time when I went there. And they had this thing called an Easy Do Dance game, um, which is kind of like a you know a DDR with a par par mix sort of thing kind of together. Um, so I decided, okay, well, since nobody's really playing this game, I said, um, I may as well try it out. And, um, you know, I, I, I gathered a little bit of a crowd. Um, I think a little bit was, it was basically uh, the, the, the notion of, wow, somebody actually plays this game kind of uh, kind of crowd. And I think the other one is the, wow, that old guy can dance kind of crowd. So, um, yeah, it's not, not, it's, it's, it's uh, it was a bit rusty, but it was basically the same game they had at the Rush Arcade in Richmond. So I, you know, I had some practice playing up the, the game and getting those, you know, some fairly decent level on that. So, um, you know, uh, Amy was a little bit impressed that, that that wow, you know, hey, uh, you know, my elephant can dance, as she says, right? So okay, today is uh, now uh, February twenty sixth, two thousand five, which is a Saturday. Um, the day today uh, is the first day that I actually will uh, meet up again with Alexander. She's right now um, um, taking uh, her uh, grade nine uh, high school at this sort of uh, sort of boarding school that's uh, kind of like a little bit out of town. And uh, today, um, you know, we go to are going to meet her at the bus station, bus stop, bus exchange, I guess, um, at around four o'clock. But of course, you know that gives us the rest of the day to sort of do things. So today, we just sort of were kind of going around from various different uh, places and just sort of going, you know, to the mall and picking up things and whatnot. Um, so I just want to, you know, sort of make a mention that um, one of the things that, would, that that doesn't exist at this time is, of course, uh, you know, Google Maps or anything like that. Uh, because you know, 2005, and you know, the, the, you know, obviously, even you know, Google you know, didn't doesn't have a really big uh, Chinese presence. You know, you'd think, you know, with all the security and stuff, that they would not. Um, so I, what I had to do is I had to basically draw my own maps and basically put uh, landmarks and that kind of stuff, uh, you know, um, on them. So basically, uh, you know, you know, basically when I started, as well as um, from uh, you know from this point on. Um, when you know, whenever I do, you know, or go to different places, I try to locate them in, onto a map. And this is what I've sort of you know, started uh, drawing and and uh, you know, sort of made as I go along, doing all these different sort of things. And so this is uh, sort of an example of what I've got. Anyway, uh, when we did pick up um, Alexander and went back home, uh, one of the first things that I thought was kind of rather interesting was is that she saw that I, I you know, I'm, I'm picking up lots of. Um, VCDs and and music CDs and MP3 CDs and that kind of stuff of various uh, music artists and that kind of stuff you know you just you know, because I'm well you know, just trying to find out uh, you know what's popular a lot of the CDs that are you know that I picked up are like you know the best ofs and that kind of stuff and um, you know artists of the you know 2005 and whatnot 
and so she was really interested in actually you know having to listen to all those and, and going through them so I was like okay well that's, that's great um you well, know, I guess that's what the teenage kids like uh, like to do. Okay, so the next couple days we've been moving around different malls and different uh, you know locations throughout the city, and uh, you know different maps and uh, things like that. So uh, uh, one of the places I went to is uh, Calafor, which is uh, owned by the f uh, French, and uh, they had uh, you know sort of like a you know s sort of grocery store at the bottom and then sort of regular uh, you know department store at the top. Anyway, I went to the meat department, and uh, you know, there's a pretty interesting uh, uh, English translated sign here, which uh, you can have a little read at, and uh, you know, kind of disjointed, but it's all right. Um, the other thing that we did uh, the, 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 the throughout the evenings is uh, we went to uh, karaoke um, with uh, some of her friends, and you know, uh, you know, some of her government friends, because she used to work at the uh, at the uh, provincial office, and. Um, <clears throat> so she invited a bunch of her friends out, uh, and uh, you know, to, to basically meet me and go and do karaoke and, and eat and whatnot. Okay, and you may notice that uh, yeah, we've uh, made a big mess with all the popcorn and the uh, and the, uh, the, the 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 sort of nuts that we've uh, eaten here. And, you know, that's part part of the course. Um, also, most karaoke places, uh, you know, when looking for English songs, um, you know, you're pretty much stuck with basically uh, you know, "Careless Whisper" by George Michael and. Uh, um, uh, right here, waiting for you by Richard Marks, uh, amongst uh, you know the, the key American uh, standards uh, for songs. Okay, another time in the week uh, we went to the back to the uh, Happy Family Mall. That's the one with the uh, play center on the upstairs of the mall. And uh, today we decided, oh, we're, we're going to try a round of bowling. And uh, so here we are doing, uh, you know, it's like uh, you know, sort of like these, the your standard uh, computer automated bowling. Um, the place is, uh, you know, pretty rough. Uh, the bowling balls are in really, really, uh, you know, really, really, you know, cracked and kind of in a rough condition. Pretty dirty too. Um, but uh, you know, it's a, uh, it's functional. Uh, there's some pretty weird. Uh, the machine that uh, does all the picking up and that kind of stuff is not 100% working because uh, it leaves pins, uh, you know, like you know, lying down and 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 doesn't pick them all up or leaves pins in the gutters sometimes. Because there's this one time where I. Uh, uh, I basically knocked all the pins down except for pin seven, and then one of the pins was in the gutter, like you know, but the, the machine didn't pick it up. So uh, my next ball, when I threw it down there, um, went into the gutter and basically hit the ball, hit the uh, the ball hit the pin that was in the gutter, flicked it up and, and knocked down pin seven. So I actually got a spare uh, on, on that just because of, the, of a, basically a weird uh, uh, spray pin. So uh, so that was fun. Um, the other thing that we did on, on that particular date was uh, when we were up uh, in the uh, you know, the play area out there, we decided to uh, go through the uh, uh, the Love and Getty machine, and uh, so that's one of those uh, folder machines where you basically go in there, you put some money in, and it takes a whole bunch of uh, pictures of you, and then you know makes some weird backgrounds and whatever, and then basically spits it out on a on a strip of film. So we decided, oh heck, we'll, we'll, go, we'll go into that machine and we'll, we'll try a bunch of these poses, uh, you know, just for fun. So here you go. Here's my selection that uh, that, that uh, I made from that machine that day. You can also maybe notice uh, some of the uh, pictures and uh, icons that they stick on the, these, uh, you know, from, you know, Disney and you know, Azumanga Dayo and uh, you know even some uh, Tokimeki in here. Just uh, yeah, it's just mix it up. Okay, so there's more of my great uh, the stories of uh, what I got in China. And again, there's. A lot more because as I said I stayed there for quite a long time so again um, you know, there'll be more episodes and more funny stories and, and pictures uh, when I come up to okay so until next time see you